Hello there and welcome to another Elite FPL video with myself, Steve-O, where today I'm just going to be talking about why I'm a fraud, why I'm a fake, why I'm a hypocrite. And you said you hate hypocrites, Steve-O. <laughs> so yesterday after I did the video and everything and like I keep banging on about, I always think to myself how when you do videos like this and you spill out a load of nonsense it kind of reaffirms certain points of view and I always uh, occasionally re-listen to uh, videos I do or specifically from my podcast that I do I listen back to see what I can do right, what I can do wrong, what's improved, what, what I don't need to improve, etc, etc. A simple example, actually. So I released the Office podcast today, the Quiz Night 1, Episode 3, and it, I had to turn it off. It's terrible. I had to turn off my own podcast because it's crap. And when it comes to the stream video that I did yesterday, I was listening going... There are certain things you were saying in that video which actually makes a lot of sense. And later on yesterday, I watched uh, a Trigger Lips video and I actually watched uh, the Nathan Bacon podcast that he edits together. And I thought, you know what? These guys have got a really, really good point about wildcarding. And... I was saying the whole time in my, in my video that, yes, going into the international break with two free transfers, etc., uh, could be really profitable from my point of view. But I won't be able to afford X, Y, and Z players if I want to either bring in over this international break, looking at their decent fixtures. And a lot of these players have a good run starting from this game week, game week four. So I just thought, to hell with it, I am actually going to play my wild card. And pretty much this is the team that I came up with based, based on my book down here. So, the team is as follows. It's Tottenham's Vicario. Apparently he was supposed to be going up in price last night. He didn't, it was Ariola. Uh, Chilwell, Udogi, Walker, Foden, Saka, Sterling, Madison, and Buemo, Jackson, and Holland. Now, the only issue I have with this team is Jackson. That is it. Now, I've got two million in the bank. And... The only spot that I'm a bit near about is literally that one there, is this Jackson. I do not rate him as a player whatsoever, specifically a striker. The fixture he has up next is Nottingham Forest, which is not going to be easy. Ironically, the history is suggesting a draw. Or if Chelsea are to win, they're going to win by a low scoring game to nil. So like 1-0. Jackson could score a goal yet. The last time these two played at Stamford Bridge, guess who scored twice? Mm-hmm. Sterling. He's not going to score twice this time round. He may get an assist. But... Chelsea's next fixtures, Nottingham Forest, tough. Bournemouth away, tough fixture. Aston Villa at home, horrible fixture. Fulham away, Burnley away, they're decent. For these next three fixtures, they're not going to be easy for Jackson. For Jackson. So I'm thinking, right then, well, what, are the, what other strikers are there? that you could be looking at to be bringing in for that second spot up front. Now, there are th uh, three other options. Number one, 
is going back to Ollie Watkins. And I can already hear someone spitting out their coffee, their tea, their Coke, their lemonade. Thinking, on a minute, Steve, though. You've been slating Ollie Watkins and all of a sudden you want him back. But look who's up against next. Liverpool away. Even though the history suggests Liverpool will win, looking at current form right now and the fact that they've lost Van Dyke, which is going to make no difference anyway, but they've lost Van Dyke. Admittedly, it's Anfield. Depending on the Europa League fixture this week, which I just do not think Emre is going to be playing um, much of his first team squad anyway, because they're five and up. Watkins could be uh, a shrewd move here for this Liverpool game. The other player is Antonio. And literally just do what Matthias wants to do, which is you bring in Antonio for one week versus Luton. And then you get rid of him in game week in game week five, and you bring in Isaac as a simple example, because he is the third option, Isaac. Now, of the three strikers right now, or the four strikers that I've got in mind, so Jackson, Watkins, Isaac, and Antonio. Antonio's here for one game. One game. To then be moved on for Isaac. Either bring in Isaac for a tough game against Brighton, despite the history suggesting that Newcastle will be beating Brighton. I bring in Watkins for a game in which currently I think potentially he could do quite well, but the history doesn't suggest that. Liverpool have got a very good record against Aston Villa, but Currently, right now, Aston Villa are very, they're a better team than Liverpool, in my opinion. And then you've got Jackson, who I just think is an absolute waste of space. But because of his relatively, relatively high ownership within mini leagues, I think, hmm, could he be the one in which I could be having egg on my face? Because he scored in that game against Luton. And now he's got the confidence enough to move forward and start his scoring streak. In my opinion, the answer is no. Ironically, here's the irony. This Nottingham Forest game is the kind of game which is like, right, I think we're going to find out what this Jackson's all about. I think we will all find out what this Jackson's all about. If... Chelsea win 2 0 and he scores again. But he's playing more of that actual centre forward role. Then maybe we could reevaluate and go actually, or reassess and go, I'm happy to keep. Or Nottingham Forest just bully him out of the game. Um, he's essentially non existent, like he's been in the past three games. Yes, I reiterate, he's made a few runs here or there, but to be honest with you, like I said, him and Gallagher may as well not be playing for Chelsea. Because Gallagher and Jackson are never there at the right the right place at the right time when needed for when Sterling on that right hand side is needing to find that pass and there's no one there. So he has to do it all on his own. So I think that it is going to be a conundrum. Um, it's going to be a very, very tough decision between these four to buy. Because I really rate Isaac a lot. And their fixtures, Brighton, Brentford, Sheffield United, Burnley, West Ham, Crystal Palace, Wolves. Me personally, I think the toughest game in all those eight fixtures, three, six, seven fixtures, is West Ham away. Brighton away, they, they could win quite comfortably. Brentford at home, it's got two or three nil written all over it. Sheffield United away, again, two nil, three nil. Burnley at home, they'll absolutely annihilate us. West Ham away, that's going to be really, really tough. One, one, nil, nil. 
Crystal Palace at home, one or two nil, and then Wolves away again, one or two nil, something like that. Whereas with West Ham, like I said, it's only bringing Antonio in for one game, which I don't really want to be doing, but it could be quite profitable. That's the thing. Jackson, what's the most I expect from him against Nottingham Forest? Well, I just said a goal. Now, if we predict the, the next five fixtures with Chelsea, Nottingham Forest at home, I'd probably go with a 2-1. Bournemouth away, <laughs> again, 2-1, 2-0. Aston Villa at home, I, I would expect Aston Villa to win that 3-1, genuinely. Fulham away, yeah, they'd probably beat Fulham. Burnley away, yeah, they'll annihilate us. So, but what do I expect Jackson to do in those one, two, three, four, five fixtures? Maybe, maybe three goals, three goals and an assist across five. There's only Watkins, he's the interesting one. Liverpool away, can I see him scoring? Yes. Crystal Palace at home, tough fixture. 1-0, 2-0. Chelsea away, can I see him scoring? Yeah. Brighton at home, I can see him scoring. Wolves away, definitely. West Ham at home, forget it. And then Luton at home, yes. So across those seven fixtures, what do I expect Ollie Watkins to do? Maybe four goals and a couple of assists. Isaac, on the other hand, he's an unknown quantity in the sense of he can either blank or he gets you two goals. So, for instance, against Brighton, he could get a double-digit haul, just a goal and assist. For instance, Brentford at home, a goal. Sheffield United, Burnley, easily see him scoring. Crystal Palace, Wolves. I think what I'd want to do is hold off Isaac, even though potentially... He could be that pick where it's like you've got him in now. You watch over the international break as his price rises because he's just got a, a goal and assist versus Brighton. But with Jackson, like I say, is it a case of stubbornly holding on to him and just going, he's got a tough fixture against Nottingham Forest. see what he does and if he completely fails miserably that's when we get rid of him or do I just get rid of him now and just go with like I say Watkins or Isaac for their run of fixture if I was to pick out of Watkins and Isaac it would it would probably be it would probably be Isaac it would probably be Isaac but this is going to be, for me, a lastminute.com. It really will be a lastminute.com situation in which it's all position where, right, I need to make that calculated thought process of, do I just go with this experiment with, with, with Chelsea's Jackson, even though I personally said myself he's a waste of space, as Isaacs looks really, really good. And Watkins is looking okay. But we know what Watkins can do. Jackson was still kind of waiting to see if he can start a goal-scoring streak. Does that goal against Luton give him the oomph that he needs to, to push on? Whereas Isaac has got such an explosive potential that I could be getting ahead of the curve here and exploiting the fact that I've got him in relatively early despite his 0 0.2 price rise. But I've got him in now where he's done really well versus Brighton. And... People are then all want to get him in for his, his upcoming next decent set of fixtures, albeit people are going to look at Brentford and go, oh, it's tough. No, it's not. 
not for Newcastle, it's not, not at home. So last last six fixtures, Brighton have won once, three nil at home. And then they've Newcastle have only won once away at Brighton. And that was in a friendly. So in the Premier League in the last five, <clears throat> Brighton have drawn one one and nil nil at home. If this was at home. Newcastle enjoy playing Brighton at home, scoring six goals against them, conceding twice. Last time they played each other, they they uh, Newcastle won four one. Um, I mean, ironically, I don't think Isaac scored in that game. No, he didn't. It was Callum Wilson who got a goal and assist. Almiron with an assist. Guimaraes, Burn. So. It, it for me, this is a really, really tough decision for me to make between the the three. Whereas, like I say, with with Watkins and Aston Villa, their record versus Liverpool is pants. They score against them, so yeah. In the last six, Aston Villa have not beaten Liverpool at all. Um, the last time they got a point was last season in a 1-1 draw but prior to that they've lost every single game 4-1, 2-1, 1 0 2-1, 3-1 and they last played each other at home on the 20th of uh, May Jacob Ramsey scored Douglas Louise assisting in the game before that when Liverpool won 3 1 at Aston Villa's ground on Boxing Day in the uh, 2020, in the year 2022, Ollie Watkins scored. Douglas Louise assist. <laughs> so Douglas Louise likes playing Liverpool. Yeah, this is going to be a very, very, very tough decision for me to make. So it is going to be. A last minute dot com. I was looking at um, the other couple of people that I have in high regard regarding their wild cards. So you look at uh, take Alex Follow as an example. Um, he's got that defensive coverage from Man City, but in Edison, Mister Six, Mister Two Pointer or Six Pointer, Chilwell, Saliba, Estupinan. But then he's going to be doing, I'm assuming, the rotation of Udogi in for Estupanan, Anderson in for either Chilwell or Saliba. Uh, Saki Martin, Saka and then Martinelli. I've only got Saka now. Um, there's something going on at Arsenal which I'm not too particularly keen on. Don't get me wrong, I'll be putting 50p on Martinelli to be scoring or assisting if William Hill allow it. But I'm happy to slowly come off the Arsenal train. Slowly. And it comes with risk. I'm not going to pretend it doesn't come with risk. Or without risk. Man United, Everton, Spurs, Bournemouth, Man City, Chelsea. I think I can just get away. I get away with not having any Arsenal apart from their key man, Saka. Son, as I said yesterday, he needs to get rid of for Madison. Foden, I've got Sterling, and then Holland and Jackson. They're the two in which Alex Volo's got the same as mine. Or I've got the same as his now. Firetog, another individual who has wild carded early. I say early, but just wild carded the other day. So I told him to go with the Spurs goalkeeper. He didn't go with um, what I told him to do. So he went with Anana. So Spurs goalkeeper got, what, eight points or something like that against Bournemouth? He had Anana who got zero. Uh, he's got Estupanan, who I think a lot of people, quite rightly, should be coming off. Brighton's fixtures aren't particularly great. I can't see him keeping clean sheets. I can already hear someone say, yeah, but it's, poten it's attacking potential. And I'm not looking at it from that point of view. 
But as Firetalk said, he's going to be swapping all these individuals out. So Estupanan will come out for uh, this week, for example, with potentially Anderson, who's got Wolves at home, yeah, as a simple example. Uh, he's gone with the double Arsenal, Martinelli, Saka, and Buemo, Sterling, Foden. And then Jackson, Holland up top. And then if I look at, say, Natasha's team, who she also wildcarded, and I don't even know where she is in the Members League, to be honest with you. I know she's quite, oh yeah, she's quite low down. <laughs> I wonder if I've taken over her now. Let's quickly find out. And the answer is, I am... Where's Natasha? God, this is this is good. This is good. Oh, there she is. She's right at the bottom. Oh dear, Natasha, you're right at the bottom of the members' league, just above Brew by three points. So Natasha's wild card team. Anana in goal. Told her not to get him. Now, admittedly, Firetog and Natasha have got Flecken on the bench. Chilwell, Stupin, and Saliba. We get that. She's got a massive bench in headache. Look at this. Look at her team. Not that you can see it, but Foden, Saka, and Buemo Matoma Diaz. She's also got Alvarez, Jackson, and Holland. All these headaches that people like Natasha are creating for herself. It's like Jason made the point. The problem with having too much money is that you're putting so much in, in your bench, you never know who to play. All right, she made the right call this week with Diaz. But Diaz is pre pretty much a first teamer for Liverpool. Okay, we know there's going to be um, competition on that left hand side with the likes of Jota and Nunes. Because, as we've already spoke to death about, those three are going to be interchanging with one another. Who plays on the left? But Diaz is their number one. He's one of their best players, in my opinion. But then it's, oh, do I do I play Henry? Do I play Henderson? Anderson? Do I play Saliva? Do I play Estupan? Do I, do I play Chilwell? Who do I play out of Alvarez, Jackson and Holland, and replace Diaz with? And it just goes on and on. It just creates so much headaches. Whereas a team like mine... A team like mine, it's I'm happy to go with the Tottenham Triple Up because as I've got it here, teams to get on in your wild card if you're doing it. Chelsea got three, but I'll, I'll, it could be two. Brentford, I've got one. Arsenal, okay, I've got one. Tottenham, three. And the teams to, to consider. Newcastle, where I'm considering Isaac. Liverpool, I'm not really particularly that particularly interested in. Um, I'd rather have this midfield here than a Liverpool attacker for now. Aston Villa, considering Ollie Watkins slash DRB, but I think Ollie Watkins will be okay. Crystal Palace from a defensive aspect. And I've got Brighton there, but their fixtures are turning, so... And I've pretty much written that down, mainly because due to fear of not owning a Brighton player. But this here, if, for argument's sake, Walker doesn't play, I've got Matty Cash on the bench. If Udoggy doesn't play, I've got Kabore on the bench. I've got a couple of playing players in which if one of these players doesn't play, there's a chance they may come off. But Walker right now is pretty much, as mentioned in the chat, a guaranteed starter. Now you watch this weekend, he won't play. Vicario, I personally think, looks fantastic for Tottenham. I think he looks brilliant, so I'll happily have him. Udogi, exactly the same. People are banging on and on and on about him before pre-season. And then he goes and does what he does. People then all bring him in, but they bench him, and yet he gets another fantastic return last weekend. And Tottenham are what I call a premium team, 
So you have the premium defender in. Chilwell, don't need to talk about Foden, don't need to talk about Saka, Sterling, Mad- Madison, as I've already discussed. He is the playmaker in that Tottenham team who want to score goals. Everything goes through Madison. When I was listening in to the game the other day, all I kept hearing is basically, can you not see that everything's going through Madison? All I'm thinking is, yep, you can tell the Tottenham manager is making sure everything is going through that boy there. Creating everything. He's on all set pieces. Get him in. And Buemo, don't need to discuss. And then as I've already mentioned with Jackson Horner, I've got no headaches. I've got no headaches with this team. Like you look at Jason's team as a prime example. And he has got headaches. Admittedly, it's defensive headaches. But he's decided, because I've got the money, I want to get in these particular individuals but like I've already said who does he play so this weekend he's probably going to play Doggy ahead of Estupan and and play uh, probably Ariola ahead of Turner at a guess and that's just me purely guessing with West Ham away at Luton I expect Luton to score in that game because West Ham are always one of these teams that seem to concede a stupid goal but so he'll be playing Ariola in goal. He'll be doing a doggy in for a Stupanan. So it'll be a doggy, Gusto, and Chill in the back. And then it will be Mbuemo, Saka, Salah, Foden, and Sterling. So Mbuemo, Saka, Salah, Foden, and Sterling is his midfield five. And then. Up front, he's got Jackson and Holland because remember, he's taken a minus four to bring in Sterling and Matty Cash. Because, yeah, oh no, yeah, that's right. So, when we're playing Gusto, it will be Henry, I'm guessing. Yeah, so it'll be Henry, so it'll be Udogi, Henry, and Chilwell, his back three, along with Ariola. And then Mbuemo, Saka, Salah, Foden, and Sterling, midfield five. But he's got Salah. Now, as Jason was discussing on the stream, and that's another thing as well, when I was listening into Jason's stream uh, with Dan kindly joining in, he they were talking about, about the fact that don't worry about the wild card. If you want to use it, you want to use it. I saw Boone on Twitter yesterday saying how he's thinking about doing a wild card because he wants to get six or seven players. And that's what I wanted to do. There were six or seven players in my team. I'm just like, I don't want them. I don't want them in my team anymore. I just thought, to hell with that, I'm wildcard. It's like Jason said, if you need to make that amount of changes, just use the wildcard early. Don't worry about it. Put yourself in a strong position moving forward. Now, I feel that's what I've done. Jason's clearly done that. His only problem is Salah. But as he was mentioned on the, the, the stream the other day, is he worth 12.5? No, he's not. We know he's not. But he's always going to consistently return. Now, Admittedly, you can get a 6.5 midfielder like DRB that can consistently return. But in his opening three matches, he's got one goal and two assists. Is that what you'd want from Salah, from Chelsea, Bournemouth and Newcastle? To be fair, apart from the Bournemouth game where everybody was thinking he's going to get a double digit return. So let's just say a goal and an assist. He got a goal. The Chelsea game was always going to be difficult. We, we saw what he can do and what we know he can do in that game. But by the 50th minute, Chelsea, Liverpool had just tailed off and Chelsea came back into the game. And then against Newcastle, I didn't watch it. But if everybody's thinking to themselves, well, Newcastle's really, really tough. Newcastle are going to win that game. And yet Liverpool come out of it winning as the history suggested. And not only that, but Salah gets an assist. And it was a very good assist as well for Nunes. It's just backing up mine and Jason's point of view that Salah's going to be assisting a lot this season. I think think Salah is going to do what De Bruyne did a few seasons back, where De Bruyne had something like eight goals and 15 assists. I'm just going to quickly check now when that season was. But 
I think that's what Salah's going to do this year. Yeah, so back in the 2019-2020 season. In fact, forget that. You can go back to last season. 2022-2023, he got seven goals and 18 assists. Do you know what? I can actually imagine Salah doing it that this season. Not getting many goals. And most of them will come from penalties. But he'll get the assists. Same here, 2020, 2021. Six goals, 12 assists. 2019, 2020. 13 goals, 23 assists. 2017, 2018. Eight goals, 18 assists. This is ridiculous. 16, 17. Six goals, 21. That's what I'm expecting Salah to do this year. And I think with Jason having him in his team, he's got an individual in which I can't even get to, even if I wanted to. Liverpool's fixtures, you know, if, if you know, as I keep stating, if you're realistically looking at Salah, you're always going to be predicting him a return in any game. So, Aston Villa at home, do I expect him to return? Yes. Wolves, West Ham, Spurs, Brighton, Everton, Nottingham Forest, Luton, Brentford up to the 11th of November. Do I expect him to return in virtually every single one of those games? Yes. Who's got him? Jason. Who's got him? Dan. The only thing that's in the back of their heads is, when am I going to captain this guy? But as I've always stated, and with all these idiots that come out and say, you can't have two premium def players if you're not going to captain one of them. You can't have three premium defenders because who are you going to captain? Don't worry about it. I look at it and go, as Harbour Boy says, the reason why these players are high priced is because they're always consistently returning. And if Salah, again, I reiterate, he may not be bringing in the double digit returns that someone like DRB is doing, but... You know, I'm going to speak absolute nonsense now like I normally do, but Diaby is going to be one of those players who's a hit or miss. And yes, someone could argue, well, hold on a minute here. I'd rather have a player get a double-digit haul in game week one, for argument's sake. Blank, 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 double-digit haul, single return, blank, blank, double-digit haul, blank, 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 single, single return, blank, 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 double. Digit. You get the idea with that. Rather than having, say, someone like Salah, who's just... Single, 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 single returns. Every single match. As a simple example. So, as we look at it here, um, in these next uh, 12 game, uh, sorry, 12 game weeks, in these next eight game weeks or so, Salah gets one single return in each of those matches, whether it's an assist or a goal. Okay? So, if we're basing it on the fact that he's going to be assisting all the time in the three, four, in the nine matches, let's say he gets four goals and five assists. In fact, let's take that back. Three goals and five assists. Anybody that owns Salah, are you happy with that? Whereas if you take someone like DRB, as a simple example, his next fixtures in the next nine, it is as follows. So Liverpool, Crystal Palace, Chelsea, Brighton, Wolves, West Ham, Luton, Nottingham Forest, Fulham, Spurs. He blanks against Liverpool, but he gets a return, a single return against Crystal Palace. He again gets a single return against Chelsea. He blanks against Brighton. He blanks against Wolves. He blanks against West Ham. But then in game week 10, he gets a double digit haul against Luton. He then blanks against Nottingham Forest, gets a return against Fulham and gets a return against Spurs. The thing with these players is that you don't... you. You're, you're literally just thinking, right, I'm going to have to kind of guess when this player is going to be returning. Whereas with someone like Salah, you know he's going to return. You can put 50p on an anytime goal or assist and you know that you're going to win that bet with Salah. With DRB, it's, oh, he's blanked again. Oh, he's blanked again. Do I bother putting a bet down now? I won't bother this week. Oh, he's returned. It's the same in FPL. That's why for me, with the Sky game, I personally prefer it in a way because the strategy tells you that you're not allowed it as I'm allowed to sneeze. 
You can't edit this out, Steve. Eh? I think pineapples. There we are, gone. There's a tip for you if you don't want to sneeze, think about pineapples. So, with the likes of uh, Salah, with knowing that he's going to be returning in every single game, just happy to keep plodding along. It's when you think, right, when, are you, when is the best time to captain him ahead of Haaland, as an example? Because we all know that, okay, someone like Vijay, for example, captain Saka against Fulham. And it did beat Haaland. It did. And well done to Vijay. But, again, this is the problem with FPL, is that all if, buts and maybes. What if Haaland did score that penalty and so on and so forth? But he didn't. So well done to Vizier Vijay. Now, going back to the Sky thing, sorry. The thing with Sky is that because of the limited amount of transfers you get, and you get one wild, basically a wild card in the season, that's it. You have to strategize your team. So you just leave it as it is. As I've discussed to death, in FPL, we can all change our players. Because of the price rising and falling, you've got to go, fucking hell, I can't allow that player to go up anymore because I won't be able to afford him. Take him... Um, Vicario as an example I saw that he looked, in fact FPL statistics said he was actually going to be going up last night he was on 100% last night I saw that so I don't know why um, he didn't go back down in price but basically um, you, you've got you've got unfortunately not only look at it from a fixtures point of view but then you've got to look at the price rising point of view I want to bring in this player take Madison as a prime example I've already seen Dave, the FPL, may not be able to, I saw him on Twitter, he may not be able to bring him in because he went up in price. So how does that change Davey's strategy? In Sky, it doesn't matter. You strategized it. Stop using that word. You strategized it so that you've got X amount of money in the bank, which you know that by game week X, you can bring that player in because there's no price falls or, or hikes. I've just looked at my team here and I can, in theory, get Saka in. I've got 4.6 in the bank. I didn't realise I had 4.6 in the bank. So, potentially, potentially, when Arsenal's fixtures turn, which arguably is, arguably, is game week six, I could go, do you know what? I don't want Saka. Now, Saka, as he's done so far this season, and as he did last season, he only seems to return. He only like seems to be returning in home games. Most home fixtures are against Man United, Tottenham, Man City, Sheffield United. The away fixtures are against Everton. That would be a tough game. 1-0... 2-0 to Arsenal, but well, Arsenal always seem to concede, so 2-1. Away at Bournemouth, tough fixture, but they should be winning. But it seems that Mikel Arteta is intent on trying to prove this, the, the, the naysayers wrong by, for whatever reason, changing his tactics up and stuff, etc., etc., and overcomplicating things. So we don't even know what Arsenal we're going to be getting at the moment. The fact they drew, the fact they drew two two with um, Fulham is just unacceptable. A Ten man Fulham, it's unacceptable. You go two one up, you're thinking right then. Let's settle down. We don't need to get the third goal. Let's just. I don't care if we have to pass the ball around the defence. I don't care. They've got ten men. Don't worry about it. And they still concede. I don't know the reason as to why they conceded, but they did. It's unacceptable. Is Arteta being too clever? And yeah, could I, in theory, get Salah in my team? I can. I can get Salah in my team if I wanted to on this wild card for those consistent returns, as stated. And I'd still, still have 0.7 in the bank. And I'd still have a three five two as a simple example. 
but it means that I don't have any Arsenal coverage and I can't be doing that. So, yeah, it's it's all these simple thought processes. But I'm, I'm, overall, I'm, I'm very happy with um, my wildcard team, which is which is obviously the important thing. You look at your team and go, actually, I'm content with that. I'm pretty content with moving forward in the next week or two weeks to go right then. Now, let's look at the teams and see where we're going. Like like I said, with Brentford, they've got some really, really nice fixtures. And then I think Mbwemo is going to ex exploit the ones where he can, where Brentford can easily counter-attack on. So the likes of Bournemouth, the likes of Burnley, Man United, Newcastle. Those four fixtures, even though the Newcastle game is difficult, I know that. But those four teams like to attack. Ironically, the teams that he's going to hate playing is... Everton and Nottingham Forest he's going to hate playing against those teams West Ham but for now I'm willing to just get on Mbwemo and just leave it I mean I even caught the price rises last night with Ariola, Mbwemo and someone else who I've completely forgotten on oh, Madison so I already caught the price rises on them. And Vicario looks like he's going up in price soon too. I can't afford these players to be going up and up and up when I want them in my team. And when you want them in your team and it's costing you points, I can't be doing that. So without wanting to reiterate the point, but I will. That's why I wanted to wildcard. As I said, there's nothing wrong with reassessing you do the minus 12, you come out of it with a plus, what was it, plus four, plus five points. And you've gone, right, I got away with that. I got away with it. Now, let's reassess and think to ourselves, right, I've got Man United team, players in my team. Do I really want Man United? Not really. They're rubbish. <laughs> Even though I've said I think it'd be quite a high scoring game against Arsenal. Do you know what? I'm backing off it. I don't care. To hell with it. But as I stated in the history, it's the home team that do well in this fixture. And it's suggesting that the home team are going to score three goals. Now, ironically, as I said to Dan on the voice message, Rashford likes to play against Arsenal. But you know what? Hold, hold, I'll hold up and go, do you know what? I've taken it now. To hell with it. He scored a goal. Brilliant. Well done to him. But I'm more happier with the players that I've got here so yeah that's it from me uh, basically and um, myself and Jason well you never know there may be another video oh yeah actually to hell with it I will go oh no I thought I disabled comments on the video that I did yesterday and um, clearly the answer was no so I'll just quickly blow my nose Clearly the answer was no, because then when I went on my laptop, I'd actually put hold all comments for um, for review. So the comments that did come through, I may as well read out. So, and ridiculously, there's um, quite a lot of messages that were put through, and for some reason they've disappeared. It's great, isn't it? I know for a fact there were... Um, comments on there how strange oh maybe it's because now I've disabled them they um they've been completely removed full stop oh, is that how YouTube work is it so even though some people commented on the videos because I put disabled on it they um let's just see if I take that option off quickly I know this is really really boring let's just quickly see if this option Thing is, when I do these videos, it's all live. So, I'm doing this at to nine twenty in the morning. Here we are. Let's just click on that. See if see if that will bring back the comments. Yes, it has brought back the comments. That's good. Ha. Um. 
Uh, Yagaya is saying, what do you think about Antonio? Well, I've already talked about it. Uh, Adam is saying, Watkins is going to tear Liverpool apart. Uh, Jojo is saying, I got Isaac in thinking Liverpool was going to get tr thrashed. Well, trash, same difference, uh, to be honest with you. Um, it's one of those where, by all accounts, Newcastle just were unlucky, by all accounts, and they didn't particularly perform either. Uh, Callum's saying, do you prefer extras or the office? I think extras is way funnier. I prefer extras, personally, as I said to... Um, day all the other day it's because it's got more slapstick based humor in it and it's just sillier and i just with the office it's even though i'm doing a podcast about it right now because uh, i've watched it about three hundred fifty thousand times um i'm just sick of it and with extras you can jump into any episode i mean you can do it with the office but you can jump into any episode and it doesn't really matter but with extras especially, there's just so many gags, especially with Darren Lamb, that it just makes it funnier. And it's essentially just XFM, especially series. Series 2 is just XFM, but on, on TV in the Christmas edition. Uh, everything FBL saying, I've gone from 7,000 on Friday to 86k at the end of Sunday. Started off brilliantly, then the rest of the week we went awful. Um, yeah, look, you're still, you're still doing extremely well at the game, so I wouldn't worry about it. It's very, very early on in the season. Uh, Natasha's saying, Steve, I wouldn't hurt a fly. I would. Um, <laughs> or a human, physically at least. He just doesn't suffer fools gladly, so watch out if you are one. You will be called out. And, and this is it. Look, I, I'm not suggesting for one minute uh, that I'm an individual who will go out their way to look for violence I never have and never will. But when, when physicality is needed, it will be needed. And it's been a very, very, very rare in my life where I've needed to use physicality, but it has happened. But I just want to get on with, even though I can't stand people, but the point, what I mean is like, I just get so frustrated by how humans are. I try my hardest to try and get on with people but if they just give me nothing back I'm just like I never ever want to talk to you again like I said yesterday the guy at work the security manager relax mate if you want me to say you're in really good shape and I'm intimidated by you there we are now what now what are you still gonna, are you going to then talk to me normally no you won't you're just, you're just a tosser that's as simple as it gets because that's his personality whereas me I try and give everybody a chance if they give me nothing back. Um, MFP saying, what bullshit hearing about how one gets treated based on how they look. Unfortunately, this is life. Um, prejudice happens. Prejudice, discrimination, whatever happens everywhere. We're all prejudiced. It's a fact. Everybody is prejudiced, but it's whether or not you're willing to voice your opinion about that person, whether it's to their face or whether nowadays it's online. Um, I get it all the time. I'd sooner have someone that looks like they are in. I'd sooner have someone that looks like that they're into the Sex Pistols as opposed to Ian Brady, Fred, or Rosemary Rares to help change, to help me change a flat tire. Spelled incorrectly. Uh, running into a bunch of dudes with shave heads, bomber jackets, braces, steel toe boots, and I have the wrong kit on, but I digress. Uh, yeah, you do. <laughs> you digress more than I do. Um, you've got a WCW t-shirt on. I've still got it on because I don't change my clothing. Um, have you got a Four Horsemen t-shirt? <laughs> Look, this is just Nitro Knights' podcast. This is just me supporting an independent podcast. I've bought a ton of their shirts and I'm just willing to spend 20 quid for a shirt and support a, an independent podcast. That's all it is. Um... The reality of the situation is that, you know, I've, I've discussed on various wrestling podcasts that I'm not particularly a fan of WCW. Um, I just started watching the 1996. Now, then I was into 1997 because of this podcast. And I was just watching it for the NWO. That was it. And I was really invested in it. But other than that, I wasn't, I'm not a particular fan of WCW. In fact, I, I think WCW is terrible, to be honest with you. A lot of issues. A lot of issues. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I think that I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to get out of here. Everybody's now happy. So 
yeah, as I said, uh, look out for potentially another video. You never know. It may be a video based on the comments attacking this wild card or attacking me. You never know. And uh, But the next time me and Jason will be live together will be on Thursday for the, uh, the, the, the school predictions and whatnot. So, yeah, as ever, thanks for watching. See you later.